going? I'm going good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. Well, I wanted to say congrats on the 150,000 downloads in just two weeks. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm really blown away. I'm really honored. I'm kind of shocked by the whole thing, but I'm, I'm working hard, so I, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever seen such a big, like, internet reaction over just someone that's, like, pretty much unsigned and just, like, doing it all themselves. So, I mean, it must be pretty great. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been very flattering. I have gotten such an outcry of support from the music blog community and, you know, like the Lady Gaga and the Britney Spears fans have really just taken to it and there's just been a really strong reaction to it online. So I'm, I'm trying to make the most of it and trying to, you know, make sure that this is the beginning of a very long and fruitful career in pop music. Yeah, for sure. And I know that, uh, for not, everyone doesn't know really how you got to where you are now. So, like, what kind of, like, led you into this business? Um, well, I started performing in musical theater and opera when I was 10. I booked my first show, uh, Joseph and Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, when I was 10 years old. <laughs> and I was in, a hos I was in the hospital because I had leukemia when I was little, and I was getting a blood transfusion. And my music teacher at school, while I was in fifth grade, gave me the audition form earlier that day. And I took it out while I was laying in the hospital bed, and I gave it to my mom, and I asked if I could audition, and she just started crying. She said I couldn't do it because I was on chemo, and I was just too sick. But I wound up convincing her to let me audition, and I got through the months of audition auditioning, and I wound up getting the role, and, and so I've just been performing ever since. You know, it was kind of what kind of saved my life, and I've just been performing ever since then. My dream has been, you know, the only thing I've ever wanted to do. By the time I was 16, I started recording and writing music. Then when I was 18, I moved to L.A. And then two years ago, I did a movie musical for Nickelodeon, and that kind of spurred things to acting, and I was doing acting on Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. And then last October, I decided to go write and record and produce my first album and release it. So here I am now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're here now. And um, a lot of people, I think, are kind of confused as to why this is just like kind of like an online free album release so I, I, I'm gonna like want you to explain to them like why you did it this way yeah well you know it's very easy one of my best friends Andrea Lewis I did spectacular with her she was on Degrassi for many years with her good friend Aubrey who's now known as Drake and you know everybody knows that he kind of took over last year yeah and she's been playing his music for me for a couple of years now and, you know telling me keeping me updated on him and what he's doing and he was doing mixtapes and releasing them online on his blog for free and that's kind of what spurred his fan base that's what made, gave him a fan base and that's what allowed him to go on tour and then hip-hop radio started picking up music because his tour was so successful and it just kind of became this huge snowball effect that uh, honestly it enabled him to exist outside of the whole record industry I mean, he didn't even have to have a record deal to be successful and to be marketed and so that was kind of the archetype that I wanted to follow. Um, nobody's ever really done, you know, a mixtape, as it were, uh, for pop music, but that's what it almost kind of is. I don't want to call it a mixtape because it's actually an album, but, you know, it is the kind of pop equivalent of that. Exactly, yeah. It's really smart because not alone are, like, are you developing this really big fan base online, you're really marketing and getting the right people, to, like, behind you as, like, a, like a, a really good fan base, you know? Yeah, totally. And, I, you know, I've been really honored and blown away by the support that it's that it's hit. You know, immediately the Lady Gaga and Britney Spears fans took to it. And those are the people that I'm trying to reach. Those are the people that I'm trying to get to listen to my music. And you know, that's why I incorporated references and samples within my music that I, I hoped would attract them. And, and it did. It worked. So, I, you know, those are the people that I want to pay attention to my music from now on. So, you know, what better way than to call out, you know, those artists directly in the first album. Saying, exactly, hey, this yeah. is that kind of music, and this is, you know, come listen to this from now on, too. So, you know, it's, I, I'm very pleased. Yeah. I know, like, you very much had the idea of how this album was going to turn out. And, like, yeah. when it came through, like, the album outwork and just the overall concept of this. So, like, what was your inspiration just for everything? Well, you know, I, I started working on, you know, I, I went up to West Virginia to, you know, work on a, just a couple of songs with my producer, and I found this 8-bit video game music sample of the NeverEnding Story theme song, and that's what really kind of 
opened the floodgates and, and showed me, like, and just inspired me for this entire album. You know, I knew I wanted to do something a little quirky and a little crazy. I wanted to, you know, for the first time, use samples of music, which I've never done before. And, you know, I wanted to do crazy things like, you know, the Dark Crystal theme song and, and, and the Never Ending Story theme song and Mozart and you can try and get like these opera samples in there and classical music. And, you know, there's all these different things that really genuinely inspire me and incorporate them in a kind of fresh way in contemporary dance pop electronic music. And so that, all of that is kind of what coalesced into the concept of Ape at Heart, you know, the science fiction and the technology and robots and, and all of that. And, you know, and, and pop music, what better pop song than there is about love. So it's kind of all, it, it all just kind of just came together in this tight ball. So that's, that's what happened. Yeah. And I know, like, the album is, I don't think a lot of people know, but, like, it was literally just you and your producer. Like, yeah. <laughs> just just you two doing this whole thing and it, it came out like people are saying like it sounds like a real legit album and I think that's you know that's yeah. the message you wanted to come, come across and I think you succeeded and I think it's just crazy how like everything's like you know came together oh well, th- thank you yeah you know I it's a, it's a testament to you know my producer's uh, talent you know how, how well he can work the limited budget that we had which was nothing and his, you know the equipment that you know we were we privy access to so, you know, which is which is practically nothing. So, you know, for for people to be saying that it sounds like a commercially released record, it, it, it's the best that I could have hoped for. It's the biggest compliment that I could get because we really strive, you know, to make it sound like something that people could go and easily pick up in stores. Yeah. You know, it, as much as it, as much as that this album was me trying to, you know, galvanize the fan base, this was also me trying to, you know, kind of make, you know, a, a cry to record labels and to kind of you know say here i am this is this is me this is the artist that i am you know somebody with a vision pick me up if you want to because you know i've done this with no budget and imagine what i can do on the next one with the budget exactly i'm telling you if you have like this team behind you i'm telling you i i just know it'll be like really big oh thank you i appreciate that yeah i know you've had some great feedback already like i saw your tweets from adam lambert and frank music as well like that must feel how amazing is that you know that's really cool i mean you know these are people that i respect and admire immensely and tremendously to get compliments on their music from people of that caliber it's it's just really mind-blowing you know i i you know it's that's a huge part of what i want to do is be a writer and a producer and you know and, and work with other people and for other people producing and writing other people's music so to you know have other artists reaching out you know, totally organically via Twitter is, is really, really incredible. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. And now the album's out, you're, it's doing great, and um, you I heard you're opening for AJ yeah. in the Roxy, like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be opening for AJ on May 6th at the Roxy, so we're just putting together, um, today the show mix is going to be all finished up, and um, a good friend of mine who's a brilliant choreographer, he, he works... Uh, on all the Madonna tours and work with Britney Spears and, you know, just really, really high-end people and, just, you know, brilliant. He's directing my show and putting together a group of choreographers and dancers and, you know, we're, we should be starting rehearsals probably by the end of next week. That's so right now it's just kind of getting all the concepts and all the show mixes and everything down. I don't have much time at all, so I have to hustle, but yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what I do. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It, it, sh- it should be, it should be really cool. Yeah. That's extremely exciting. And I mean, I yeah. think people are super excited that you're like moving forward with everything. And, um, yeah. I know that a lot of people have been asking like, Oh, well, is he going to make those shirts for, from the 8-Bit Heart? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like everyone's like, Oh, I want a shirt. I want a shirt. Like everyone's like, Oh, when can we expect those? Yeah, um, I it's some it's all stuff that I'm working on. You know, it's really tough right now because I don't even have a manager. You know, I I am totally operating on my own, 100%. So that's that's something that I'm trying to look into. But you know, my graphic designer, you know, who's a really brilliant artist who's done my site and my press kit. Um, you know, I, I can only ask of him so much because he's helping me and donating his time to me. Uh, to work on this, so, you know, I can't exactly, you know, expect him to go and take a break from his job to go and make t-shirts and stuff, so it's it's stuff that, that is being worked on and will be coming soon, but it's just, as it is right now, it's just tough for me to operate on my own. Yeah, for sure, and, um, 
a lot of people have been wondering also because you've worked with Tyler Shields for your album artwork and your album cover as well, and like they saw that you were working on a video as well. So when what can you tell us about that? Um, it's it's not going to be a full fledged video. It's kind of supposed to be like an appetite letter uh, for you know videos to come and things like that. He does these really incredible video portraits, which are you know these these slow motion, single seamless take set to music videos that are kind of like you know a picture brought to life, a video. Portrait. And so we're doing one of those, and we're actually going to shoot it this week, and it's going to be pretty crazy. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that.